Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another teardown. Yes, they do just keep coming. Um, right, what we've got up today is um, this big uh, power supply that I've just picked up off eBay. Uh, I actually picked up a couple of these um, at the same time. Um, so I've got this one and a slightly different version that I've been um, fixing up because it had a little bit of, um, not um, electrical damage, it was, uh, it was just sort of mechanical things. So I've been fixing that one up. This one doesn't work. Um, so given the, the size of this, I'll show you how big and heavy it is in a moment. Um, I'm going to strip this one down and um, probably use some of the bits out of it to fix the, uh, to fix the other one. So uh, this big old beast, um, this is a Brandenburg uh, Precision Lab HB power supply. Um, this is part of their Gamma series, uh, which I believe um, goes all the way back into the early 70s. So possibly one of their first first products. Um, so uh, I'm just going to try and get all of this in camera because it is absolutely enormous uh, and weighs 23 kilos. So it's a pretty big old unit. So just bear with me a moment. Right, hopefully you can see it there. It's a big beast of a unit. Um, it's a 19-inch uh, rack mount um, job, uh, 4U high, and you can see it's pretty deep. And you can see the pretty big old beast right right here we are with a slightly better view of the uh, the front panel um, this particular model is the Brandenburg um, 628-10 which is rated to uh, 10,000 volts at 10 milliamps which makes uh, 100 watts I'm not entirely sure what this would have been used for um, Certainly the voltage is too high to be for photo multipliers um, the, and certainly the milliamps as well, but it's not enough to be anything to do with x-rays. It would have been used for some kind of electrostatic equipment or something like that maybe. If anybody's got any thoughts on what uh, it might have been used for, uh, leave them in the comments. So on the front panel here we've got um, two really nice big, uh, big handles because it weighs so much you need something to carry it with. Um, We've got um, some really nice panel meters. Um, this is the uh, the voltage in kilovolts and the uh, the current in milliamps. Um, just under there we have uh, the output voltage control. So we've got um, two there. One is a, a coarse and one is a fine output control. Uh, just to the right of that we have uh, some indicators. Um, we have uh, polarity plus and minus and we have some indicators for the mains on off switch and the EHT switch, which um, just turns the, uh, the high voltage on and off. Underneath that, we've got a small little um, orange light called TRIP. Um, these particular units don't have constant current control in them, so um, it is easy to, um, to exceed the 10 milliamps, and um, um, obviously that would be a problem. Um, so what they've got in here is a simple trip mechanism. So if you exceed the 10 milliamps, um, it just trips out and goes to goes down to zero on the volts. So um, it's a bit of a shame that it would have been nice to have um, to have it current limited um, with uh, some kind of constant current control, but sadly not. So uh, that's the reset switch to um, to turn it back on once the uh, once it's tripped out. So the case is all um, aluminium. Um, there's a frame and then these uh, these panels which slide in from the back. Um, on the back side of it, you have the uh, the actual outputs. So you can see here, they've got uh, the mains cord coming in. We've got uh, the mains line fuse just here. And we have the high voltage output. Um, unfortunately, the two units that I bought didn't come with the, uh, the output um, plug. To, uh, to go into here, um, but hopefully I might have a solution for that anyway. So uh, there's a small exit here. This is actually a ventilation hole. There's a, there's a big heat sink inside here and a fan which just exhausts out here. Right, let's uh, take off this top cover and we can show you the inside. Right, so there's the insides. Um, we'll just have a quick run around on the components and which bits are where, uh, and then I'll take the uh, 
the side and bottom panels off and we can have a, a little bit of a proper look at it. Um, so the mains comes in just down at the back here. Um, there's a, a line filter just down there. Um, we've got a large bulk storage capacitor just here um, next to a, a big uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, mains transformer of a reasonable size. Um, the outputs on all of these uh, gamma series of power supplies are all 100 watts. So um, as the voltage of the output increases, um, you know, for this one is 0 to 10 kV with uh, 10 milliamps of output. Uh, the next size up, which is the 20,000 volt version, that only does 5 milliamps. Um, and they actually go all the way up to um, 100 kV at 1 milliamp. So they're all 100 watt output power units. So um, the actual power consumption on this, even though it, it, it's so huge, is uh, it's not actually that big. So, um, so only a, a sort of reasonably sized power uh, transformer in there. Um, we've got uh, a large heatsink arrangement um, with a load of uh, driver transistors on, I would imagine. Um, we've got a, a cooling fan motor. Um, and just here we have uh, what is a uh, probably some kind of flyback transformer arrangement to uh, to actually generate the high voltage. Um, this unit here is a high voltage rectifier, so this converts the uh, the AC waveform coming out the flyback transformer into um, DC. And then this unit here is called a high voltage filter, so this will probably um, smooth and smooth that out, filter out any noise that's come from the uh, from the switching of the uh, the transformer there, and then output to the back of the case just there. Uh, for, further towards the front, we've got um, what seems to be the control board. Now, when I actually uh, bought this, um, there's actually supposed to be this little clamp arrangement is supposed to be sit just here and hold the board in. This is broken off. Um, and this was actually just uh, flapping around, rattling around inside, so um, that uh, just plugs in there. Um, so there are actually some user changeable options. Uh, for example, if you want to change the polarity, um, you actually swap out um, this rectifier module, um, which just plugs in onto uh, four stands um, to allow you to change it to either a positive or a negative supply. Whether that means you have to change this board at the same time or this is the part that actually just uh, decides whether it's a, um, a 10 kV or 20 kV unit, I'm not entirely sure, but that, uh, that just plugs in there. And you can see the backs of the, uh, the two panel meters and the two um, controls for the uh, output voltage. Well, I've just removed the um, side panels and the panel on the base. Um, you can see here underneath, um, everything's mounted on this um, this metal, this steel chassis here. Um, we've got lots of really nice, nicely loomed up wiring. Very, very nice. Um, well, if we have a little bit of a closer look at everything, um, we've got this plug-in board. Um, pretty old school stuff here uh, we've got um, uh, we've got uh, Colvern limited wire wound so that's obviously needed a wire round pot there for some reason um, pretty old school stuff ITT capacitor there 470 volts 63 sorry 470 microfarad 63 volts I'll just have a look at the end because on these old style axial uh, capacitors they normally have um, the pressure relief valve in this rubber end and you can often see a little bump if it started to die but it doesn't seem to be so it might might be okay is there a date on there yeah I think that's a date just down in there 7834 so towards um, the, the latter parts of 1978 so that's pretty old school. Um, we've got nice gold edge connector there. But lots of uh, hand-drawn tracks. 
I must say, considering this is uh, looks like it's dated from the late 70s, it, uh, it does look actually fairly reasonably clean and clean inside here. Um, must have been kept in a largely clean environment. Yeah, we've got some nice old school um, transistor packages and cans. I guess there's going to be a voltage reference in here somewhere. I'm not going to bother trying to find it. Um, got a little inductor here. Interesting, that's just flapping around there. I'm surprised that's not being gunked down with something, but uh, nice too how they've um, they've put small little loops in these uh, these devices here to go through the PCB. All right, we've got the other part to the uh, control board. Uh, not a huge amount on there. Um, there's a a 16-pin device IC just there. We'll have a look what that is in a moment. We've got look, look, looks like a bridge rectifier down there. Small little transformer or choke or something. The edge connector and uh, a nice looking uh, PCB mount relay there. Uh, old school glass passivated diode just tagged on here. Um, there's no plugs and sockets on this for the connection to the, the main loom wiring. It's all um, wire wound and soldered to uh, little posts. Um, there's a tr another trimmer down there. That's about all there is. Um, the two voltage controls, um, they're Colvern branded like the uh, like that other big trimmer. Uh, and by the sounds of them, when you turn them, they do seem to be wire wound as well. So that's nice. And we can just see the backs of the uh, the panel meters with a small little. Uh, board on the back of each one. Looking at it, the wiring from this from this one seems to partly come over to uh, to this um, high voltage filter unit here, uh, and that is the voltage. So I suspect they're probably measuring the voltage, the output voltage at this filter point. This is a big box. Looks like it's completely potted. Anyway, uh, a bit further over towards the other side, we've got the um, the push switches for the mains, the mains on and off, and the high voltage control. And it's just on a little metal bracket which has been bolted to the front panel. Uh, we've got a relay just down in here. I suspect that is the um, the the actual output limit trip. That's a guess. There's a little, we've got a little tag board just down in here with a couple of uh, large resistors on it. Uh, we've got this cooling fan, which is a really nice metal cast aluminium squirrel cage fan. Uh, we have this uh, large heat sink arrangement here. This is probably the drivers to generate the, uh, the uh, primary input uh, to this flyback transformer. Um, there's just some, you can just see some wires connecting the two together coming over onto these uh, these three terminals here and we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five connections on the other side. Um, we've got this large uh, bulk capacitor here. I can't quite see what size that is. Um, oh, I've just noticed we've got another fuse here as well. Right, I've just flip, flipped this round so we can have a look at the other side of the, uh, the heat sink. Um, you can see the uh, the fan there, really nice, uh, just sort of miniaturised blower fan. We've got a small PCB with a few uh, few passive components on it, a couple of uh, more trimmers. So that board runs up along here. We've got uh, tags off coming to each of these um, devices, which are on the other side of the heatsink. So I can't actually see what they are at the moment. Um, we've got uh, the mains line filter just there. Right, if we take a close look at uh, some of the more interesting parts, which are the uh, the three high voltage bits, um, this is uh, is wobbly. I didn't expect that actually. There we go. I'm sure that's all right. Um, we can see the uh, ferrite core go around underneath there. There's another device. There's a, there's a high voltage connection coming out of the uh, the flyback just here. Comes down onto a small box. I can't quite see what it is underneath. And then comes out 
and then goes into this uh, this rectifier. So this might be some kind of output for um, feedback or something. Right, I can't seem to get this out without uh, flipping the whole thing over and undoing uh, uh, nuts and bolts from underneath. So before I do that, I'm just going to take off this uh, rectifier, which just looks like it's screwed in just here. Yep, oh, it's all covered in that black stuff you get on anything that's high voltage. Um, so, yeah, we've got Brandenburg uh, made in England, which is nice to see. Don't see it very often nowadays. Um, high voltage rectifier type 628, serial number 80S. Oh, I guess they didn't make many of these. Uh, positive polarity, output 10,000 volts at 10 milliamps. Well, the sounds of this, it seems like it's potted. There's some screws on the top, so we'll just whiz those off and see what's on the inside. Yeah, I've just uh, taken these screws. I've just noticed that these are uh, nylon, um, plastic nylon uh, screws. And, yep, <laughs> that is very potted. It is actually quite soft, so uh, I might uh, save this for a future. Um, so we've got one, two, three connections that were actually used. This one doesn't actually seem to have a, it's just got a plastic, oh it's got a plastic screw um, just in there, so that one's obviously not used. A small label here uh, with uh, what looks like test or quality assurance stuff on it. Um, a date there, 8580, 7580, yeah. And uh, we've got these uh, nice molded standoffs for the uh, for everything to plug into. So the uh, the connections on here push through onto these posts here. Oh, it looks like we've got a couple of uh, switches there, so they'll be safety interlocks. Um, so if you uh, if you were stupid to have this turned on with the top cover off, and you were even more stupid to try, to uh, try and pull out the rectifier while it's turned on, um, I would imagine that these will um, kill the power. Uh, so there's no connections on this post. Um, the output from the um, transformer comes down through this small box down here which we'll take off in a moment. Um, that comes out and goes into this post here. Um, this post has an output down part way down here, which comes out to eh, onto this tag board. And then the output of this post comes out and goes into the uh, high voltage rectifier. So, um, so we've got uh, one input, one output, and one mystery. So maybe that's some kind of monitoring or feedback. Right, let's have a bit of a look at this uh, high voltage rectifier. Um, we've got type 628, which is the uh, the power supply type. Um, serial number is the same as the rectifier, so obviously polarity neg. Oh, that's interesting, because that one says polarity positive. <laughs> um, output 10 kV, 10 milliamps. Um, we've got another sticker on here with some dates and stuff on uh, and we've got to what looks like some little handwritten drawing of a resistor and maybe some values uh, we've got another date um, what's that 21st of the 4th 1980 17th of the 4th 1980 um, CM 17th of the 4th 1980 628 and we've got these, uh, these big high voltage connectors. Yeah, nice little suction, uh, very, very tight um, tight tolerances on that. So, yes, yeah, my um, my thoughts were to uh, cannibalise the um, the connectors off this this power supply, this one here, because this fits into the back of the uh, the main output on my uh, on the other one that I have. So I'm probably going to. Um, desolder, desolder this and um, 
fit some nice high voltage cable onto it and then that should mean I'll have a working 20,000 volt power supply. So you can see on this there's, we've got a nice deep um, entry, um, a really tight fit between this part here and the inside um, and then we've got um, an extra um, flange on here just to provide even more um, depth so uh, things can't creep up and then around and it probably also gives a bit of sealing for humidity and things like that as well. Well I've just released the screws, um, well the, the nuts that were holding in the uh, the flyback transformer so I should be able to take this out now. So there's the uh, main transformer, the high voltage connector there. That's um, Teflon Teflon coated wire with a push push fitting. And you can see this other mystery uh, block just here. Um, no idea what that's for. There's a couple of wires coming out of it heading into over onto this board here. So uh, maybe that's feedback or something. So mystery box. No idea. For some reason it's green on that side, I'm not sure why. So again it's been potted, a fairly soft potting compound so I might be able to uh, dig that out. Well I've just released the screws for this uh, filter unit, so let's see if we can take this out. Wow, that's heavy. Um, yeah, so not a huge amount to see. It's completely potted. Got three connections there. We got to, so that was the input, and we got three uh, output connections. Um, these went off to the uh, front panel, the voltmeter. I'm just pushing a screwdriver through this uh, this metal side. The uh, you can the potting stuff on the inside is quite soft and squishy again. So, but I can't believe how heavy that is. I wonder whether there's uh, um, some uh, magnetics in there. So um, you know it might have some chokes and filtering and stuff in there. It does say filter on it as well. So. There's probably something relatively interesting in that, I would have thought. Might have to see if we can open that up at some point. Well, I've just gone to take off the uh, the high voltage connector off the back, and uh, I've just noticed that you can't you can't like go through that way, and uh, it doesn't go through that way. So this has obviously been soldered while it was being put together. It's somewhat annoying. So uh, here's all the parts for the mounting for the high voltage rectifier. Um, so these uh, these things with the integrated high voltage connections in, um, they just plug through onto there. Provide a connection into the base of the rectifier. Um, this sat underneath the rectifier, and you can see the two um, safety interlock switches. Actually, just a uh, second thought to that. Um, they might actually indicate to the um, the actual unit uh, what polarity this is so it can put the right light on the front uh, because there is two indicators on the front there which have uh, positive and negative so this maybe one is a safety interlock and the other one is the switch which um, indicates positive or negative. Um, because there, there's um, there's little holes in there for the switches to either push push against or uh, be bypassed. Actually, yeah, that is this switch here is definitely pushing against that one, but that one is not. All right, so this is the main transformer. Not a lot in there. It's literally just a transformer, bridge rectifier, and that uh, inline fuse. 
and here we have the main storage capacitor here, 15,000 microfarad 63 volts and this is the um, control board or part of it the um, the other bit plugged in just on here like that so on here we've got yeah looks like a small transformer there uh, bridge rectifier odd random passive components we've got one IC here which is um, FUA7100 oh sorry is that 0DM and that seems to come back as a voltage comparator which uh, is uh, not unsurprising and I've just noticed uh, that small transformer there actually has um, a fair bit of information on it um, you got uh, ratio 6.6 .6 to 1 CT pry and then we got secondary just written down at the bottom there so that uh, will probably be a current transformer and that side is the primary and that side is the secondary with a 6.6 .6 to 1 ratio and we've just got the heatsink assembly here, I've just disconnected everything um, this has all the uh, driver transistors, well I presume the transistors on for driving the flyback you can just see uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on there uh, looks like we've got uh, a diode as well in there right so we have on on this side we have some RCA 2 and 4 347s dated 1979 and on this one we have BDY90 uh, 1978 so those are just um, high current NPN transistors and those are just uh, NPN high power transistors as well okay I don't think there's much more to see in this now I'm going to save um, this high voltage rectifier that filter unit and um, this uh, this mystery box for another day so uh, if uh, once I get those done I'll insert those at the end of this video right so yeah I don't think there's a huge amount to see I'm going to save these panel meters off the front they're really nice I'll so definitely be saving those right I've uh, got the one of these mystery little boxes um, this is the one that went between the um, high voltage transformer and the rectifier so the high voltage came into um, this connector here and then went out to the rectifier from this one and uh, these two wires went off to the uh, the main control board um, so I'm just going to try and get this out um, it seems to be quite a squishy uh, potting compound so hopefully it might just um, chip out So the resistor is just a uh, 100 meg, meg ohm resistor. And that is a, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is, but it's about 2.2 nanofarads. Um, and I can just read on it, uh, 10 kV. It's hardly surprising. And that is a diode. Um, Looks like it's an international rectifier one. Can't really read the number because I've scratched some of it, some of it off. And that diode is open circuit. Um, this bit here seems to be uh, just a core of the wire. Not sure whether it's something that's been. it's actually a proper component or whether it's just been coiled up it does appear to have a wire running down the center and then a coil around it I'm 
doesn't seem to measure out as, as anything at all. It just seems to be a, a piece of wire. You can see it's um, soldered at this end and this end, and then you've got this tightly wound coil, but down the centre. You've got a conductor in the centre as well. So the uh, the coil that this coil that I've just unwound went around this centre, and um, it's all just part of the same thing. No idea. Right, one thing that I've just realised to myself. Um, there's probably a few of you screaming away at me there uh, when I was checking that diode that. Um, this, of course, is a high voltage diode, uh, so you're not going to be able to test it with your normal diode test feature on your multimeter like I was doing. Um, you need uh, to put a bit of voltage across it um, and see what it drops. Um, and of course, it conducts one way and doesn't the other. So um, I've just retested that and um, it does check out fine, actually. So uh, next up, we have the high voltage rectifier module, uh, branded Brandenburg, England. Type 628 serial number 80S, uh, polarity positive, output 10 kilovolts, 10 milliamps. Right, I can't find my uh, hacksaw anywhere, so it's going to be um, Swiss Army knife to the rescue. There we go. <laughs> Got out in one big lump. Um, yeah, very handily they've actually put on the markings. So we've got uh, positive, negative, and AC input. So you can just see got a positive sign, negative, AC, and AC. How very kind. Yep, looks like we've got another one there. So, yeah, these must be the diodes. Um, yeah, there's another one in there. Oh, I'm not going to go any further. It's quite clear just to... Just some diodes and... Oop, they keep breaking off. Very, very thin leads. Yeah, everything just keeps breaking off. There's a couple of capacitors in there as well. Uh, one, two, three. Right, uh, next up we've got this um, monstrous great big uh, filter unit. Right, uh, I'm not going to go any further. My arm's about to drop off. Um, this is uh, pretty tough stuff, this, and it's uh, really springing and annoying. So I'm not going to go any further. I think it's pretty much answered what uh, uh, answered question about what, what was in it. Uh, it's just some capacitors and an inductor. Um, got another one of these um, central wire with a springy wire around it like we had 
on that other module, but it's it's it was connected at both ends, so it was electrically all the same. So whether that's just some sort of mechanical thing or or what, I don't know. Um, so we have the output, which was. Uh, Oh, that's still attached to the bit of metal. Uh, this was the output, so we've got uh, an inductor here coming out to the output. Um, that, it's all buried away in there, but I would imagine that uh, that's just going to be connected across the connected to these capacitors somewhere, and these just provided a, uh, a smoothing a smoothing ability uh, from the uh, the rectifier. So in here we've got one, two, three, um, four thousand picofarad, ten kV capacitors, and we've got um, one here. I can't really read. I think it's eight hundred and thirty-five picofarads at uh, thirty kV. So that's a bigger one on the end there. Um, we've got a set of uh, resistors here. Uh, what look to be. Uh, vitreous wire wound resistors, so I, I'd imagine they're just um, bleed resistors just to kill the uh, any charge in those capacitors. And uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, we had um, this resistor as well, which was connected to here, and then through another resistor. Um, I would imagine that's for the, the voltage uh, monitoring. Yeah, that's really high value, that's 95 mega ohms, that one, so. Okay, I hope you found that interesting, um, seeing the insides of a 10,000 volt power supply. Um, this, before I sign off, I'll show you quickly the other um, Brandenburg power supply that I picked up at the same time. Um, this one is if it's from the same range, it's basically the next model up. Uh, this one does 0 to 20 kV, uh, but only goes to 5 milliamps, not the 10 which you had on the, the one that I've just taken to pieces. Um, all the controls are pretty much the same. Well, in fact, they are all the same. Um, even the front panels, that it's absolutely identical. Um, the good news, though, that this is working. Um, I've, I did a quick, quick test on this. I cranked it up to about 10 kV, and it seemed to be working fine. The um, calibration on the meter seemed to be a bit out, but that might just be the way it is. Um, inside, they are pretty much identical. So you've got uh, the little control, plug-in control board on a base. There's a board down here, just like you saw before. We've got the filter, rectifier, um, the HV transformer, the drivers for that, the uh, blower fan, and the little controls on the front. So yeah, it's pretty much identical. Interestingly, the flyback transformer is does seem to be absolutely identical, and there's no markings on it either. So I wonder whether they might actually use um, the same flyback in quite a few of their of the different voltage ranges. Uh, maybe they just drive them differently. Um, so that might be interesting. I've certainly saved the flyback out of the the one that I've just taken to pieces. May have a play with that in the future. Now one thing I'll probably do with this is give it a really good test. As I said, I'm going to set up some kind of dummy load, um, which will be interesting considering I've got to deal with 20,000 volts at 100 watts. So um, that might be interesting. Uh, I'll probably just check this out and clean it up, and I'll probably be reselling this um, because I don't really have a use for it. It was interesting to see inside, but it's just absolutely enormous and heavy, so I'm not going to keep it because I don't really have the room. So um, you, that might end up on eBay at some point. Now, in terms of the future, there's not really a huge amount in the offing in terms of teardowns at the moment. I normally try and have uh, one um, racked up, ready to um, ready to take apart after the uh, after I've uh, just finished doing one, but not in this case. So it might be a few weeks until um, I can find something interesting to take apart, um, unless something crops up in the, in the near future. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you on the next video. Catch you later.